Assalamu alaikum everyone. Welcome back to another video. I hope you're having a, a wonderful day. In today's video, I'm going to talk about the remaining ETFs that we need to talk about. So recently, about a week ago, I did a video about three different ETFs, including this one here that I own in my portfolio. If you haven't seen that one, go and watch that one if you live in the UK, because it will definitely help you understand what these ETFs have to offer, the holdings in there, and so on. So the you know the expense ratio and everything else. We will do the same today for five different ETFs that are basically not one based in the UK and the rest of them are based around in Canada and the United States. It's quite difficult to find some of the information for some of these ETFs, but I've tried my best. Okay, if I make a mistake, please don't just kill me. Okay, just find out. Um, just share it with the community, just correct me and whatever if I make a mistake because some of these ETFs are in different countries. I'm not too sure basically about certain things and it was quite difficult to put the information together. Now, if you're enjoying this type of content, free content that's trying to help basically the community, please you know like the video, subscribe to the channel. Inshallah, let's make 2023 a good year for all of us as investors, as brothers and sisters of Islam. And inshallah, let's help each other when it comes to buying Sharia compliant stocks. If you haven't done it yet, let us know what's on your portfolio, some of the stocks, some of the ETFs, whatever it might be, inshallah. Okay. Right, let's get started and let's look at the first um, ETF and that is WSHR. This was quite difficult to find a lot of information about this ETF. I believe it's based in Canada. Okay, the expense ratio is basically similar to the expense ratio for the rest of the ETFs that we talked about in that video, which is zero. No, actually, no, that they were 0 0.3. This is 0 0.5, right? And they do have a dividend yield of 1.37. They have started only in 2021, according to the information that I found, and it has 134 million in asset under management if you like apparently there's 47 different stocks in there but i think there's more and because they only restarted recently there's no information in terms of total returns for basically year to date or the three years or so on is not available in the uk so no isa account no sip maybe in the us and canada it might be available to basically if you have a one of those um, tax heaven kind of accounts if you like brokerage i'm not sure where you can buy this in the uk okay if anyone knows where you can buy it, please let me know let me quickly show you so if you go to uh, wealth simple website you'll find a bit more information about it you'll find the actual certificate to prove it's actually straight compliant you'll find a little bit information on the the fun fact um, sheet there and then we scroll down, you will see the industry weight. So you can see the consumer stables, industrials and so on. Okay, so the how is weighted. I like the fact that it seems because it's consumer stables heavy and the industrials and healthcare is probably more towards the um, kind of defensive um, ETF, if you like. Okay, it's not like the high flying with the technology companies, if you like. But then again, when it comes around to the diversification or the basically side of things in terms of worldwide, it looks like it's quite, it's all right. It's not that bad, actually. 33% in the United States, Japan, 17%, okay, Switzerland, 8%, Britain, 7%, and then so and so. Um, so you've got a lot of different um, companies in there. And then you look at the top holdings, like 1%, 1%, just about 1%. That's not bad at all. In fact, I do like the fact that it's only 1% weighting in terms of the um, top holdings. So again, they also have purification uh, in terms of dividend side of things. Some of you asked me recently how you provide your dividends. I've done a video a while back, so I will link it in this video. So towards the end of the video, there will be a link there. If you just click that, hopefully it will show you that information that you're after. So there you have it. So that's the first company. And then you've got... In fact, that's not what I was looking for. This is what I'm looking for. So you've got these, all the different companies, okay, that um, are included in this ETF. Some of them I don't really know. Some of them I do. Um, so if you keep scrolling, you will see Walmart. You will see Johnson & Johnson. You will see Lingreet, um, Procter & Gamble. 
uh, what else is there do I know Seeger is there actually Mondelez uh, West Man West Connections which is similar to West Management um, Crowder Internationals which is basically UK based company Coca-Cola and then million other so I don't think there are 45 stocks in there there's probably more but where I found the information is said there was only 45 anyway that's that first one my opinion because it's not even available in the UK and even if it was I don't think I would be interested I'll be honest with you based on the okay expense ratio is a little bit and um, high at the same time some of the companies that have, they've invested I'm not too sure I'm uh, for me it's a pass okay maybe someone else will be interested in it or maybe I'm missing out something okay the next one is halal the, the one we have already spoken about quite some time okay I'm just kind of give you overview of um, the some of the information that we're looking for okay in terms of um, where we are now okay so as you can see still basically five percent and zero point five percent in the and expense ratio dividend is 1.19 Starting 2020, um, 2019, sorry, 193 million in asset under management, which is increasing every couple, every year. Number of holdings is quite very well, um, very well diversified, 226. A year to date basically was about 14% when I did uh, the research for this video, uh, minus 14% that is. Um, and then to the three years is actually retained about 12%, which is not bad if you think about it. And you can buy it now in the UK using your ISA account in Trading 212. Oh, by the way, do you like the fact that I changed the... You might actually like it. You might hate it. The fact that it changes the theme, um, just a darker theme. Um, let me know if you th if you like it because some of you actually said um, it was too bright sometimes when you're watching the video. So let me know anyway what you think. Should I keep it? Should I get rid of it? Okay. So here we go. Now you can literally buy. I think I've got a couple of pounds in there. Let me see. Let me add. There you go. So I can literally click review and then press send and then we will buy it as simple as that so you can buy now halal etf if that's something that you're interested i'm not saying go away and do it but that's basically your arc you can buy it right now in your isa account it is available canada us and now is available in the uk okay um trading 212 and then interactive brokers now trading 212 has it definitely as we've seen just now Interactive brokers. This is my account, by the way. You can't see what is the holdings, by the way. Um, but um, as you can see, I've searched for halal. It comes up here, and then instead of giving me normally, if I'm searching for stock, it normally will give me like how many stocks do I need and blah blah blah. But this one, it doesn't even say anything. Just like literally, it says here, this product that does not have KID or KIID available in a language approved for your country blah 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 and it doesn't allow me to buy it okay so if i even press what am i buying there's nothing to like i haven't actually selected whatever so it's the same for the couple of other etfs as well that we're going to talk about it is exactly the same okay right so moving on to the holdings in this cup in this etf it's let's go to here okay so the holdings for halal is the, a lot of the technology companies if you like so tech heavy if you like okay and then top 10 is the big boys you've got the apple microsoft so basically what they've done is they've taken the s p 500 okay um weightings more or less if you think about the especially the top ones apple microsoft they've taken amazon out google out and basically meta but it includes Johnson & Johnson, Exxon, Procter & Gamble, Chevron, Tesla, Eli, um, Eli Lilly, Pfizer, Merck, and then so on and so And this was updated on the 29th. So it looks like it's actually legit. So yeah, there you have it. 43, 45% basically is the top 10. And I genuinely like these companies. Okay, Majority of these companies are Sharia compliant. And Apple, um, we've talked about recently, okay, Microsoft, J&J, &J, uh, every single one of these holdings is actually um, a Sharia compliant. So this is in getting interesting, okay. The only issue I have with this ETF, and I'll be honest with you, is the situation recently that happened, okay, with... They had they got fined by the SEC. If you haven't seen that, go and do a bit more, a bit more research. They've lied about something. They said something. I can't remember exactly the words, but we talked about it at the time and I shared it with the community. So if you're interested, 
go and find out. But the expense ratio for me is a bit too expensive. At the same time, it's still early days. I'm going to give these ETFs maybe another four or five years before I start maybe putting money in. Okay, I'll be honest with you. That's my honest opinion because I don't know how great these companies are. They come and go sometimes, so I don't want to risk my money. Now, the next one is SPUS. This one is exactly what we talked about before. Um, just almost the same when it comes to expense ratio, when it comes to dividend yield, 1.5. It started in 2019 as well, 174.5 million um, in the under as, um, asset and management. Um, the number of holdings, 188, is down a year to date. And then for the three years, is up about 26%. So it seems it's slightly doing better than the halal ETF. It is available basically through ISA. I thought it was available when I was doing the research, but then this happened. So exactly the same thing that happened with um, Halal ETF, okay, is exactly the same thing that happened. So if I go and click this one now, is exactly it does the same thing. So it pops. Can you see that? It gives me the same information. So initially, I thought you can buy it if anyone is basically owns a Interactive Brokers account and you don't have an ISA but you just have the normal account, let me know. Maybe sometimes these things these things are not available through the ISA account. So the family account is an ISA account. So for that reason, it might not be available. Okay, so there's some information in there. I don't want to click it, but this seems, I thought it was available, but it's not. And it's definitely not available on the um, trading two and two. So it, it is definitely available in the US, Canada. I think it is available. Um, I, f I can't remember when I did it, but I was doing research a while back and I said, I think he said it was basically one of the um, places you can buy these ETFs is Canada. If you have interactive brokers and it works in any other countries, please let us know as well. You definitely cannot buy in trading 212. That was a mistake. Let me just get rid of that. So as you can see, I put IB, so interactive brokers, um, but it also you need to be you need to double check in your own country and see if it's actually available um, if you've got a non ISA account also please let us know as well in terms of the holdings in this ETF okay if you look at the Morningstar is basically Apple Microsoft basically what they've got is the same as what the S&P 500 has okay so the Apple Microsoft Alphabet Alphabet both the, the Alphabet or Google, if you like, Johnson & Johnson, Exxon, NVIDIA, Procter & Gamble. And then the next lot is basically my market cap weighted. And these are basically the top. Every single company in the S&P 500 is, if you look at that all the way here, I think up to Cisco, I think that's what it is in the S&P 500. But yeah, there you have it. So that's that one as well. Um, and again, in my opinion, if it was available in the UK, um, I probably will look into it in maybe about a couple of years down the line but not right now okay again it depends on the who's basically behind it and do they actually have a can we trust them basically that's all i want to know okay the next one is the same this is the REIT version of this etf they own by the same company um expense ratio is slightly higher dividend yield obviously will be higher because it's a REIT. it started in 2020 and they basically it's about 40 billion in the under asset management 32 companies only is done quite a bit and um, for the year to date okay um, but when it comes to the three years obviously it doesn't exist can you buy it through the ISA um, I'm not sure so that's why I put a question mark there I think you definitely should be able to buy in the US but in the UK I'm not sure or even Canada I'm not too sure so you have to check like I said there's a lot of fact checking today because if you are out there and you live in one of these countries and you've got brokerage like the interactive brokers accounts and so on please let us know or if you can buy any other place let us know but definitely in the uk also let us know if you own it okay let me quickly show you some of the holdings in this etf and as you can see here these are the holdings so crowd castle is the first one 12 percent in terms of weighting prologis this is now actually a charade compliant but be careful i think the um this etf basically this um read okay basically this is what's called the what do they call them they call it the um the landlord of amazon basically every single amazon warehouse is actually owned by this company so they do make good money from amazon if you like but the problem with them is they have a very high level of debt and they can go from one quarter to quarter basically quarter 
from Sharia compliant to non Sharia compliant. Okay, then you've got public storage and a couple of other companies in there. Um, there's not that many to be honest. I think it was about 30 something companies, and there you have it basically all of the companies in there. Um, again, another one that I would not touch unless I have approved these companies are basically um, the company that came up with the ETFs is actually a reliable company. The final one is HSBC one. This has been around for a while and this is not just called HSBC. I think it's called, this is the full name, HSBC Islamic Global um, Equity Fund. You can find it actually AJ Bell or you can find it in Hargives and Lansdowne. If you live in the UK, you can buy it through your ICA, you can buy it through the SIP if you like. Okay. Um, in terms of expense ratio, it's quite really expensive if you think about it almost one percent they have no dividend yield according to the information that i found they started in 2000 okay so they've been around for a long long time but when it comes to and whoa that's not right that is almost identical to that so that's wrong let me just double check that so according to Hargreaves and Lansdowne, if we look at this so you can see the expense ratio is basically almost one percent and the asset under management basically is about this much in terms of um the fund size if you like the number of holdings is 127 according to them and um, they don't pay any dividends so they reinvest it okay the minimum investment is about 100 pounds according to this and these are the holdings so you've got apple microsoft amazon tesla alphabet so they're more or less basically the s p 500 if you like and okay, can as you can see software and so and so um buffered. Let me see the countries. So 75%, 79% of it, 76% um, is actually comes from the US, 4% in Switzerland, J Japan, United States, about 2% Ireland, and then so on. So there you have it. That's the final one. So again, I would I be investing in this? Absolutely no, no chance. And I'll be honest with you, you know me, if you've been with me for a while, you know I actually, the iShares ETFs, I prefer them because they are kind of straightforward they've actually made it better now the expense rate ratio is way cheaper than what it used to be so why not invest in these companies basically in these etfs than actually the ones that we've just talked about halal and sbus probably be a good ones to invest in but then again my concern is the company itself who come basically who owns iShares and blackrock blackrock is the biggest asset manager in the unit basically in the world so they're not going to go about business, okay? The version of this company that deals with this actually based in Ireland, okay? So there's a lot of information out there, whereas Halal and other people um, that have come up with these ETFs could potentially be, I don't know, bankrupt. They could be running away with our, ma with our money. So that's my only concern. And honestly, don't shoot me, but that's just my concern, okay? So out of all of this, I'll probably be interested in these two here, okay? But until I've got, until they can prove to me that they're not going to run away with my money in the long, long run, maybe in about four or five years down the line, I might start nibbling and adding a bit more into basically to my portfolio. But for now, I'm happy with this one here. Okay, to, to continue with this one and see how it goes, inshallah. Right, I don't want to make the video any longer. If you are still here and you like this type of content, please like, subscribe to the channel. Have a wonderful day.